Hi, welcome back to the Writing Skills Seminar. It's me again. I hope you enjoyed watching part 4, Writing a Research Article. Now for part 5, I divide the slides into two. For part 5A, I'm going to cover up to literature review. And for part 5B, I'm going to cover methodology to conclusion. This is the presentation outline. We're going to look at PhD and related information, main component of thesis, formatting titles, abstract, writing chapter 1, and writing chapter 2. Now, this is a photo of a research article and a PhD thesis. Now, observe the difference. The main difference you can see is that the thickness of the thesis compared to the number of pages of journal article. From there, you can see that writing a thesis would be much, much difficult and more lengthy than writing a journal article. The most important is that we be meticulous. Now, we do not expect that we can get no correction or no mistakes at all, but at least we try to reduce the number of error. I would like to remind again that we might have different opinions. Therefore, just belapan dada and agree to this. This is about myself. This is the chronology of my PhD study, which I'm showing you the photo of my thesis. And in terms of research students and thesis examining, these are the numbers. In writing a thesis, this would be a very important document. The thesis examiner's for UITM, this is the official form. You can see that the version is 2017. This would be the latest thesis examiner's report. This is the, the front page. And finally, at the end of the form, the examiners has to give the verdict. Based on the thesis, they will decide whether ex the thesis exceeds the required standard, the thesis meets the required standard. I highlight the front page where the examiners have to fill up the particulars of the student and for the guided assessments, they are using a, a scale of 1 to 5 and then for the second part, there is going to be a detailed assessment which is basically the report will be more open. Now if you look at the guided assessments, it is divided into three parts. The, the first part is the A, the robustness of the thesis. The examiner will assess the title of the thesis, whether it reflects the content of the thesis, and then whether the title describes the research context, approach, and conclusion. Next, the problem statement. Then, the scope of research. The examiners also will assess your literature review. The research methodology, results and discussion, conclusion and recommendation, and then the references. Part B of the guided assessment is about the quality of the thesis. They will assess the depth of overall discussion, the data analysis and interpretation, writing style and grammar, the continuity 
and organization flow of the thesis. So spend time to look at this. Part 3 of the guided assessments will assess the originality and the scholarly discourse. So they will assess the scholarly content, the contribution to academic research, significance to body of knowledge, and the potential for publication and commercialization. Now let's go to the philosophy. What is PhD? Now I took this from the Cambridge University. It's written in the website of Cambridge University that PhD, your effort will be focused on writing a dissertation of up to 80,000 words. And then other keywords are significant or substantial contribution, discovery of new knowledge, development of a new theory, and also significant publications. Other than that, the keywords are novel findings, the novelty of your work, and a broad and depth understanding, plus the discuss critically, an ability to discuss critically research. So what's the meaning of novel? Novel means of a new kind, different from anything seen or known before, a novel idea. So, what is the novelty of your study? This will be a favorite question, especially for PhD students. For sure, you will be asked during your viva. Now, in terms of level of novelty, we can segregate into three. The first one, the first, the highest level of novelty is about you developing new theory, new equation, or new model. For example, Newton's law. For example, uh, Jamal equation or John equation, right? So that would be the highest level of novelty. The second one is when you develop new method or new algorithm, new tools, new materials. You're using new approach. So that is the second level. And the lowest level is just furnishing new data to accept or reject existing theory. Based on my observation, experience, and looking at quite a number of theses, I would say that who sets the standard of the thesis and the viva? Now, before VIVA, it's actually your supervisors. Now, during the examination, the examiners, they will decide whether your thesis and your, your defense of thesis during VIVA is enough for a PhD or a master. Now, what apparently in that room, during VIVA actually, you, the candidate, are the real expert regarding the subject matter. Now, in terms of standard, if you benchmark the international standard, we could see that the PhD, the work of PhD is equivalent that three journal papers and a master's one journal paper. And when I talk about three journal paper in the U. Now, let's see the prologue. Now, you have completed the work. So you're going to be so stressful. How to start writing? And remember, for SNT, the minimum number for master's candidate is 20,000 words. And for PhD thesis, is 30,000 words. So what you need to do? Start looking at thesis. Look at at least 5 to 10 thesis. And journal articles which the work are close to yours. And remember... The references should be from high impact journals. Try to look at as many theses as possible. Make them your reference. Now, do not try to write all the sentences by yourself because it's going to be very difficult. It's going to make your life miserable. I like this quote by Stephen King which is saying that if you don't have time to read 
you don't have the time or the tools to write simple as that. And remember, when we talk about writing, you must distinguish the difference between writing the thesis and writing the general article. At least when we are referring to the number of pages. Now, the thesis structure. This is the conventional thesis structure, which in general it has five chapters. Chapter 1 is the introduction. Chapter 2, the literature review. Chapter 3, methodology. Chapter 4, results and discussion. Chapter 5, conclusion. For chapter 1, it covers the background, problem statement, research objective, scope of work, significance and application. Unlike a research article, the literature review for thesis is separate into its own chapter. Now for conclusion in chapter 5, usually you need to put the conclusion and you write the future work. Before the main body, these are the things, the declaration, the knowledge, dedication, list of figures, tables, content, abbreviation, symbols. And then at the end of the main body is the references and the appendices. Now, we may put this in this way. Out of those four chapters, the introduction explaining why did you do it, the methods, what and how did you do, the results, what did you find, and the discussion, what does the results mean. Again, if you look the anatomy of a scientific paper, there's not much different with the anatomy of a thesis. How to write a good title? Now, we may start with a draft title in the beginning. And then, meanwhile, if you have another idea, just write it down and continue with your work. So, try to complete the thesis first. This strategy may help in terms of to maintain focus because earlier in the beginning you already have the draft title that means whatever you write you will reflect that title and once the thesis finish you improve the title and then choose the type of the title. For example, you can choose the type using declarative titles descriptive titles or interrogative titles which you may start the title with a question. Now if referring to the JAPS bulletin, the title should be simple and concise statements. The titles shouldn't be too long and according to APA not more than 12 words. You may use a colon but make it short. Do not use acronym. Readers who are not familiar with the acronym may simply skip your article even though it's relevant to their search. Now you can put humor, puns and irony which will help attract more readers but it is found that that kind of title will appear less often in the search results. A research article, we may say that the title of the thesis is more general. And this is true because for thesis, you have a lot more work than a research article. For example, a research article, you might concentrate the work. It might be one third of your work, one portion of your research. So it can be specific. But when it comes to the overall thesis, a few of your research sections just now, when you combine, you cannot write your thesis very very these are other examples we use the common one is to use the term development uh, you can see here this is my the student which I co-supervisor and this is Dr. Muhammad Nuazmi Patal he graduated from Shibara Institute of Technology and I was the co-supervisor, so this is the title, 
that has been approved by Shibora Institute Technology. And this is the title of my PhD. The title of my PhD is the development of a novel technique in measuring human skin deformation in vivo to determine its mechanical properties. So if possible, from the title itself, we can see the novelty of the work. Now this some rubric and comments, if you look here, this is a possible comment. Uh, one student put, this is the title, Robust Position Encoding and Velocity Deduction for Remote Monitoring of Irrigation Water System. By the way, this is master's level. So when we read it, when I read it, the comment was that the thesis does not clearly show the result from rigorous analysis of highlight the success related to monitoring remotely the irrigation water system. And therefore, we suggest that the student do some amendment to the title. Now, if you look at FRGS, the rubric of FRGS saying that the title should be specific in nature, reflecting fundamental issues to be resolved novelty and reflects the content of the proposal. Now for FRGS is fundamental research is clearly stated that the title should reflect a fundamental issue. Now the thesis of the abstract you may also refer to part three earlier slides writing of which I have discussed the definition, the component, the structure of an abstract, the do's and don'ts but for thesis, it's quite different. We may look back at the structure or content of an abstract. It has all this introduction, problem statement, objective, methodology, result, discussion, conclusion. And for thesis, since the number of words more than a research article, then you may have the opportunity to include uh, more information such as the significance, future determination and also now the F set for research article is shorter for F set for the F set of an thesis since it's uh, longer so we can put more sentences there okay usually the number of words is about one page or 500 words therefore the F set of thesis is much longer than F set of research article but still if you put a good structure, good portion of it, then you will have a good man. If not, if the structure is not good, then you can see that you know, the portion, some asset will have a length about talking about the problem statement or objective. Uh, some thesis might explain more on the methodology, but lack of discussion and conclusion and some of the thesis will explain so much on the introduction. So this is the rubric and comments related to the abstract. And this is the sample comments of uh, an exact thesis. Now, let's look on how to write the introduction. The chapter 1 introduction is very important as it is the reader's first true interaction with the work. Now, here, the readers might also mean the thesis examiners. So, like any other story, we must set a compelling stage that invites the thesis examiners into our research world. So what are the components of chapter 1? Basically, you have the background, the problem statement and the research objective, the scope of work, significance and novelty. Now from the problem statement and research objective, we need to highlight the knowledge gap and explain how we intend to fill that gap and why. This will highlight the novelty of the work. The chapter 1 introduction is recommended to be written in two stages, the draft and the final. Start with a skeletal introduction, 
that clearly states the hypothesis, the questions your research answer, and then you start writing the manuscript. Now once we have finished the other parts, which is chapter 3 and chap chapter 4 and chapter 2, now when you write the section for background, as an examiner, they will ask, what are you trying to tell? Are you trying to tell the motivation to carry out the study? Are you trying to highlight the importance to carry out the study? Or is it the, a brief introduction? And also, is it the latest news? So this should be reflect clearly in chapter 1, in the background. This is the actual extraction from a thesis at the uh, background section where the author start telling about the work, a brief literature review, and from that he, he came up with a conclusion that said that this review justifies the importance of new research to enhance the depth of knowledge already pertaining to the medical properties of skin. So, this is the intention uh, of the storytelling in the background. It is also written that this thesis is written for the reader with a background understanding of motion and sys technique, digital image correlation techniques, finite element. Math. Now, looks at the problem statement. Now, the problem statement should answer these questions. The issues and problems, are they critical or not? Are the issues and challenges identified? Are the issues and challenges summarized? And are the problem statements aligned to the research objective and research gap? So this is the research gap and problem statement from a journal article but I think the way they highlight it we can use it when we write a thesis these two because from the literature review they come up with a research gap and then from the problem statement they formulate the objective so these are the sentences that we can adapt in writing our thesis this is another example. Now this comments, from this comments, we can see that we need to align. Again, this is the alignment. Apart from that, when we are formulating the hypothesis or research questions, right, we must ensure that the hypothesis align to research objectives and research gap. Okay, what is hypothesis? Hypothesis is defined as a supposition or proposed explanation made on the basis of limited evidence as a starting point for further investigation. And we are formulating the research questions. If possible, we try to include all of this why how what where who when is does and now let's look at the uh, uh, research objective and the research objective should be smart means specific measurable and time-based and you can look at it google what's the meaning of smart this is the example of the objective for a research article. Now we can use this sentence and adapt it into our thesis. Now this is a, a section from a real thesis, PhD thesis. Okay. So for example, these are the objectives of the thesis. The word to assess, that's of high order. 
to evaluate, to propose. To propose means that we are coming, we are proposing something new. So these are the sentence of objective and is reflecting high cognitive level. From here, we can determine whether the work is not. Now, this is from another thesis, uh, UK thesis, my thesis. Now, there, at Cardiff University, uh, in my research group, so we start with the aim and objective of the study. We, we're telling the ultimate aim of the study. And then we put the key objectives there. And for each objective, then we do some explanation. So in my case, for me, I have six objectives. But in general, in Malaysia, uh, the expected number of objectives is like three to four. This is a sample of rubric and comments. Again, if you observe, basically the comments is about to align the research object. Now let's look how to write the scope of work. Now, when you want to do your research, in generally, you are not going to solve all the problems. Uh, for example, when you did your literature review, you will sum, summarize the problems. However, I am sure that you are not going to solve all the problems. Therefore, what we need to do is to put the limitation or the scope or the boundaries of your analysis and study. The way to justify this is that by putting some words, for example, numerical analysis only, Two dimension only, thin plate only, or if your samples involving uh, human subjects, then maybe you can put uh, male only or female only, or students of UITM only. Uh, other than that, you can put it's up to prototype only, or your research is done in Malaysia only, or the data you collected is uh, representing in Malaysia only. Now, for all this limit limitation, you need to justify why you limit your study to that particular scope only. So, you may ask these questions okay, for chapter one uh, and how to write the scope and limitation. It's difficult to find a good one. Most of the scope and limitation is sounds like methodology. Uh, so you have to look at several theses which have written uh, a good uh, sentences for scope and limitation of work. Now other than that, you can also uh, mention the significance of study and is the significance of study, do you relate your study to specific agenda policy etc for example uh, recently or the current trend is that they are referring their work to the uh, SDG where or sustainable development goals and for example uh, at one of the our university they are fo focusing their project related to the NAE grand challenges we have the uh, 21st century grand challenges uh, this is an example uh, rubric and comments related to scope of work. Right? Uh, for example, if I read this, section 4.1, research scope and limitation could be improved by clearly highlighting the three phases of the research methodology. Right? And usually the panel also will mention, uh, the examiner will also mention whether the study fulfills the minimum standard of a PhD or a master's degree. Now let's look how to write the literature review. Now these are the main points uh, about the literature review. It's very important that first of all 
you have to remember that when we do literature review, actually we want to establish the research gap. And the way we write the literature review it should be in terms of critical. The examiners want to see whether you have written it critically. If you remember uh, the, the earlier slides when I talked from the Cambridge University, uh, when he talked about uh, the requirement of a PhD, one of the words is uh, you critically review. Right? So this is very important. Don't just write the chronology of the work, but also you have to uh, have some, uh, you must uh, write it critical and critically. Now, the other thing is that for literature view, the guide for it is that it's all topics covered and do you did a comprehensive literature view. Uh, is there any underlying theories that you want to mention in your work? Uh, some of the things there, uh, when you come out, you listed or you summarize the theories, sometimes uh, it will come up, um, you will select one out of that and why. So that is unique, the justification for any decision that you make, especially when you want to conduct your study or you want to select the research methodology. Other than that, the risk list of references, are uh, they reliable? That means from uh, the source. Of your references are available example from a high reputable journal or it can be newspaper cutting uh, books right? uh, those references from the uh, those references from the uh, website or blog it might not be so reliable because uh, the sentences could change uh, now and then and then the, with it the fair references you have all the fair for example if you find a research gap saying that uh, studying uh, studying solar system is uh, important but then all the references just come from one person even though there's a uh, 10 references there it come from one person that means not not might not be fair so what you need to do is get a few papers from different authors and from that you summarize uh, whether that study is important or not or the gap is there or not and also to make sure that your references are recent because if you come up with a research gap then suddenly the paper is in 2005 is 15 years old then if you want to put that uh, based on the review uh, this problem has not been solved before but then it's 15 years ago maybe between 2005 until today uh, there are recent papers which, which actually solve that reporting that the problem have been solved so make sure that your references are recent so you may also think of uh, what are the things that might uh, affect the write-up of your literature review now when you look at the papers uh, these are some guidelines so see what people have done or not to solve the problem when you want you to relate uh, to a problem you must see what people have done or not to solve in solving that problem and then for each paper you look how they did it so when reading your reference or your reference you must look uh, you focus on the title focus on their objectives okay, what they were solving and then uh, how they did it means uh, the materials the method what type of equipment they use, what the models, materials, how big is the sample. Other than that, you can also look at their findings, their results and their achievement. What did they achieve? And then from the recommendation also, you may see that usually they will propose a recommendation for future work. And from that also, you can continue this, their study. And then remember, uh, more references, more marks, and you have uh, newer references also more marks but make sure you understand whatever you quote from their study now, this is uh, to avoid that if the paper is saying uh, something else and then when you write in your thesis it means some, something else eh? especially during your viva if your, you quote the paper from your examiner and then suddenly during your viva you said that the author mentioned this and then suddenly it is actually the external examiner and say, say no, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't uh, say it like that. So it's going to be a big problem. 
And then from all this work, you must relate to your study. Now, remember for literature review, the main aim is that to finding the research gaps or research uh, knowledge gaps or problems which have not been addressed. So when you're addressing this, this will highlight that actually your work is novel. So, so the other main points, the I repeat again the points uh, about teacher review is that when you talk about teacher review, you must remember uh, re about research gap, which from the research gap you can come out from the flow statement, and then it must be a reti critical review. You can also review the trend of some subject, right? Just like uh, in a review articles, and then the number of references is it uh, substantial or not? And the references it a wide coverage and fair, and then is the references are the references are recent and re uh this is example you put in a thesis is is good if you come up with a, such a table it's a summary of the literature review from this you can highlight the research gap for example here uh you list from all other papers you make the tables in this in this case uh Okay, from this, uh, the, the, the title, this is a master thesis. The, the, the topics is about skin and rubber-like materials. So these are the materials. Okay, these papers, uh, this study about uh, skin. And then these papers, these few papers, studies about silicon rubber. And these are few other papers which uh, studied or reported, published about the elastomers and PU. And then from that, you... What you did is that uh, you take the subtopic from that paper and then you start uh, charting the, the table. Eh? You plot, you chart uh, which paper uh, have studied what or reported what. From here, it's very clear that so you, you can show the difference, your current study, how it differs or how it uh, approach the, the present work. So from here, you can see that, okay. Uh, the current study, uh, studying in vitro, and then tensile, and then ASTM412, ASTM DB409, which is in this case only one paper have done that, and also this. So the combination of all these, you know, the combination of these, the approaches or the analysis that you are, you are conducting, so it shows that your work is different from whatever have been published in other papers. And re always remember that for the thesis, uh, you may list the key references. So if you have done your experiments and your work involved in experimental or numerical analysis, and then what you can do there, you can put uh, the you can list the main references right to your work. And I'm sure that for all of your work, you have your main references, and make sure that. The main references are comes from a reliable uh, sources. For example, uh, Q1 journal. From all of this, when you reviewed a lot of papers, then conclude that you can see here. Yeah, there are okay uh, too few. Right? And maybe study, right? And then, um, if you can look here also, lack of biomedical studies, and then the limited available equipment. So these are the three research gap. And from this research gap, later on in chapter one, you can formulate the problem statements. And from the problem statements, then you can formulate your objectives. Okay, if you look here, uh, this is the sample rubric and comments for. UITMs, uh, this is the form. They ask you about the relevance and see, they asking whether you provide critical appraisal or critical review and whether your literature review is comprehensive means it covered all the topics, especially related to your methodology. Right? Uh, you can go there. So, this example, okay, the strength is that the number of, of re uh, papers reviewed. In chapter 2, it's more than 100 and it's substantial for the level of a master's of engineering in degree 
nevertheless, the weakness is the candidate did not clearly relate the significance of the review papers to the current study in identifying the research gap. So, some suggestion for improvement is that to be more selective in choosing the papers. Only papers related to the current work should be included and reviewed critically. Yeah, this is the case where some students, in order to put a lot of papers there, number of papers, so they just add uh, many papers where uh, some of the papers are not related to their study. And then uh, the way you write it, make sure that the flow of chapter 2 could be improved to clearly highlight at the end the research gap. Okay, and about the references, the rubric is saying that relevant and up-to-date references and follow guidelines devoted by the university. Uh, this is the way, the format, the format of how to write the citation and references, list of references. Now, this is one of uh, actual comment. In general, the references are sufficient and up-to-date. More than 30% are less than 5 years old. Nevertheless, quite a number of references need to be improved in terms of format and details. For example, you know, uh, in some thesis, uh, the student might forget to write the, uh, the, the full detail of the paper. Some details might be missing. Okay, so if you ask me what's the number of references, I would say for masters by research, uh, it's good that if you can achieve uh, at least 100 references. And for the PhD, I think it's good if you can reach uh, up to uh, at least 120 papers. Uh, if you can go more than 150, you're very good for a PhD. And if possible, uh, try to publish your literature review as a review article. So the format, make sure the format uh, you follow, uh, what's the format guideline, and also make sure all the details about the literature review uh, is there. Because uh, if the readers want to find the literature, uh, the, the paper that you cited, they will have all the details. Therefore, they can search it in the website. So, in most, if most of the references, okay, as I mentioned earlier, if most of the references are not recent and not available, then the research gap and the, the novelty of the study could be questionable. Okay, so. For example, if take this, your statement, eh? if you write a sentence like this, based on literature, uh, Mahmoud 2010, it could be concluded that no such system has been developed. Now, the year is 2010. Now, it's already uh, 2020, so it's about 10 years ago. So, uh, do you really sure that in 10 years, uh, no recent work have developed that system? Then another uh, sentence that could be question is that based on a blog, Mahmoud 20, so the references is recent, 2020, in the year 2020. However, the reference is a blog. So if they do not put in the blog, they do not cite it to uh, reliable sources, for example, a Q1 journal, then this might be questionable because if uh, the, uh, what, the write-up in the blog, they can change from day to day. Or perhaps after one month, the blog will be deleted or removed. Right? So, this is the things that you need to make sure. So, again, uh, what you need to do, the, the, the uh, summary of that, the main points are to highlight your main references, more papers, more marks more recent, more marks, and then make sure all are relevant areas. The, the one you discuss is in uh, relevant areas. And then it comes from reliable uh, references, high impact references or journals. And then you can also cite from standards and manual, and also from books. Okay. So let's uh, recap our presentation outline. So we start with uh, discussing PhD and related information about PhD, and then uh, we have discussed about main component of thesis, and then we talk about the. I gave some examples about the titles and the abstract, especially the portion of the sentences, the structure of the abstract, and also uh, there were some guidelines uh, related to write 
writing uh, chapter 1 introduction and also writing chapter 2 literature review so with that uh, we stop uh, the, the session for part A writing thesis uh, up to the literature review and do not forget to watch uh, the next slide which is the part B eh? it's the same topic writing a thesis but I'm going to cover it up to the conclusion and some other information. Uh, so if you have any questions, you may contact me uh, based on these details. Okay, with that, uh, let's take a break. Thank you for watching. And we're going to continue later with uh, part 5B. See you soon.